This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. It's hard not to lament the state of kung fu movies. After decades of brilliance, today, as of Donnie Yen's persistence, the genre seems all but dead in Hong Kong. Yet here we are, still talking about them like it was yesterday. Clearly, the interest is still here. So what's up with that? This is why Garlands was made. A 2010 kung fu comedy featuring a bunch of washed-up husbands. In the film, small-time real estate worker Leung is sent to settle a dispute in a village. He meets a bunch of old-timers who were once kung fu masters, which inspired Leung to pick up the practice. And through his eyes, we see the story of Hong Kong kung fu cinema unfolds. The film examines the state of kung fu cinema with love and care. For that, this indie film won the Hong Kong Film Award for Best Picture, trumping Ip Man 2, Detective D, and Reign of Assassins. Needless to say, this is a film well worth a watch. So let's do just that today. Let's see what the new generation of Hong Kong filmmakers think of the genre. The film begins with our loser of a protagonist, Leung, being sent to a village. Almost instantly, he gets bullied and had to be rescued by a passerby, Tiger, an Asian kung fu practitioner who still believes in helping the weak and fighting injustice. Yes, that is Leung Xiao Long, most famously known as the Beast from Kung Fu Hustle. He was one of four dragons in the 1970s, along with Jackie Chan, T Long, and Bruce Lee, and he for sure can fight. But awesome fight scene aside, take note of the story. It's a classic setup from classic kung fu movies. A remote village is where you find masters. But of course, set in modern times, the look of a village is drastically different. This incongruity of a classic story in modern society is how the film expresses its humor and, more importantly, points out how out of place classic kung fu films are in today's world. Indeed, as Tiger leaves, we see that he walks with a limp. Just as the state of the genre in Hong Kong, still very much capable, but not without a lot of difficulties. Later, Leung arrives at a tea house, yet another classic location in kung fu movies. Here, he meets Dragon, Tiger's senior under the same master. Turns out, at a fateful duel, their master fell into a coma for 30 years. To support the master, the two converted their kung fu school into a tea house. Much the same way how Hong Kong cinema changed from making grand kung fu epics to day-to-day -day local indie films. In fact, Dragon even wants to sell the tea house, but Tiger still cares about the master and refuses. The glory they all owe appears to be the last thing keeping the tea house around. Anyway, because of Tiger's earlier heroic deed, the bullies come looking for trouble, and a brawl breaks out at night. This fight really shows how age and old injuries affect the old fighters, which parallels how it affects kung fu stars in the real world. Hong Kong kung fu films were made with blood and sweat. One look at Jackie Chan's career is enough to let you know just how dangerous it is to make movies in Hong Kong. In America, they use a airbag, but we cannot afford this kind of expensive things. We still use the cotton box. And with the matches, as Leung looks on with horror, it makes us want to ask: Do we really need such a dangerous commitment? Say, if you run a kung fu school turned tea house in the middle of nowhere, what should you do? Well, you gotta check out Squarespace because you need a website to advertise your business. Physical locations may be limiting, but your internet presence can be reached by virtually everyone. That's why it's so important to show yourself on the World Wide Web. Pick a template from Squarespace, and you can get a professional-looking website within minutes. From editing text to uploading photos, everything is as intuitive as you imagine. Start your free trial at squarespace.com/accentcinema and use the code accentcinema to get 10% off your first purchase. You can always use your free trial to set up a website before you launch it to the world, risk-free. Whether you run a tea house or a kung fu school. If you have something to show, show it through a website. Visit squarespace.com/accentcinema today and start your free trial now. In an accident, the grandmaster, played by Teddy Robin, gets dropped on his head. 
he miraculously wakes up from his 30-year coma. With their masters awoken, the aging fighters decide to restart their kung fu school, at least for a bit, just so their master is happy. In a joking manner, the grandmaster proclaims, The second one is particularly intriguing, as it goes against the usual philosophy of kung fu. We won't get to know what the master really means until later, but we do get a hint. The film contrasts the kung fu taught in this school with the rival's modern gym, where kickboxing is taught as a form of fitness exercise. It is presented as lacking in something. What does that mean? For now, let's put a pin in it. Speaking of the rival school, they are holding a tournament. Upon seeing a younger fighter with impressive moves, Tiger wants to give it a shot. This younger kickboxer may represent the newer action flicks or the increasingly sophisticated actions of Hollywood, which are flashier and shinier than the dusty old kung fu cinema. Indeed, one of the big contributing factors to the fall of Hong Kong cinema is the growing dominance of Hollywood. In the 90s, many Hong Kong filmmakers migrated to the US film industry. The audience interest also shifted away from local productions. It's not so different from how younger martial artists in this film prefer modern kickboxing rather than kung fu. With this conflict established, Tiger decides to join the tournament. What follows is a montage sequence that comes right out of the 80s. Unfortunately, the rival school, which is also the tournament runner, deliberately harasses the main characters and disqualifies them after they fought back. As expected, the rival school won their own tournament, much to the disappointment of the younger fighter. This statement may as well be a commentary on the state of the genre. Gallants came out in 2010, right around the time when action cinema was transitioning from old-school physical performance to visual effect enhanced fantasy. It felt like people aren't going to the cinema to see actions being performed. Corporate IPs chasing became the new norm. It's all about that hype and publicity. Anyway, despite being disqualified, both Leung and Tiger still want to fight. So what did they do? Here we finally understand what the no finish rule means. The purpose of Kung Fu is a spiritual one. It's not for physical benefits, at least not just that. It's also about fighting, about competition, about challenging others, and challenging yourself. In a way, this speech is also about the difference between the old and the new action films. These new actions may be slick to look at, but it lacks the challenge. When we see Golden Age Kung Fu films, we see them for how much the martial artists can push themselves doing feats that seem humanly impossible. And it's the fighting spirit that makes Kung Fu films so special. Anyway, Leung goes to the rival school and challenges them privately. Thus, we come to the final showdown. It's the young fighter from the rival school against Tiger. It's a straightforward brawl with no special effects, just punches and kicks and the occasional subtle insults. Like a Golden Age Kung Fu film, it's all about the martial artists and their physical performance. Knowing that makes this simple fight so much more enjoyable. Of course, Tiger loses. He is, after all, more than twice the age of his opponent. But he does win his opponent's respect. Tiger falls down and laughs, while the head of the rival school asks his disciple, <laughs> As the film draws to a close, we are left to digest that complicated statement. You get it when you are older. Tiger's defeat is the film's way of lamenting the death of the Golden Age Kung Fu cinema. Tiger is happy that he has what he had, and is happy that he is still respected, even if he is no longer relevant. But more importantly, his defeat is a hopeful one, because as we see with Leung and the young rival fighter, the interest and talent are still here. 
these young people are us. Martial arts cinema is technically still going on in Hong Kong, with Zhang Jin being one of the new talents. Well, new, to its 47. The genre may not have the relevancy it once had, but as long as people are talking about it, as long as there is still love for it, then there is a place for it. As the credit rolls, we see the tea house change its sign. It's now, once again, a kung fu school.